Awesome. So we are recording. Please make sure everyone mutes out. All right. You guys, um, it is so cool that Mark and Judy have put this together. Take Action Thursdays are such an incredible opportunity for us to be able to learn from all sorts of different leaders who have had proven success, who are really making an impact in the lives of many others as well as their own family. And so um, I'm just super honored. I get to announce the absolutely incredible Carly Foster, you guys. She is a mama of seven. She is a wife. She is purpose driven. She's amazing. She is uh, just, you guys, what she's done here in a little over a year is absolutely incredible. You guys, she's a Royal Black Diamond and she is going to share some fire with you this evening. I have no doubt about that. I'm here with my paper and pen ready. I hope that you are as well. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to pass this over to Carly Foster for our Take Action Thursday. Thanks, Carly. Hey, thank you so much, Melissa. I appreciate that beautiful introduction. Um, you guys, I just love Melissa. I like cannot even take credit for my own success. It was truly her and what she's done to help me and how she's just poured into our teams. Love this lady. She's become one of my dearest friends. So I'm super thankful for you, Melissa. And thanks for introducing me. Um, so tonight, you guys, I'm going to talk to you guys um, about how to avoid burnout. I'm going to go over some basic training things um, while I'm going to have, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll interlink some different trainings within this, but um, we want to avoid burnout because burnout's real, right? If you guys have never experienced burnout, if you're new in the industry, if you're still at that, like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. This is so fun. Everything is great. Like, you know, and I've got massive amounts of energy. Great. Run with that. But still want to take notes on this and put it in your back pocket because everybody gets to a point when they feel tired. And you know what? Burnout doesn't have to happen. It doesn't have to negatively affect your business. Um, it can be something that can be avoided if, you know, you take, you know, pay attention to this or if you're in burnout to pull yourself out of it. Right. And so the reason that I'm sharing this with you is because guess what? Like I've been in the industry seven years and I've had stages of burnout and I've had to learn how to pull myself out of it. I've had stages where I got out of alignment and it's really important that we, um, that we recognize that and we don't let it go there because it's detrimental to our business. Um, and so it's really important. So I'm also going to give some prospecting tips while I'm sharing this too. So definitely listen for those as well, but let's just talk about like, what does burnout look like? What does it look like? So if, or even better yet, like what does it feel like? For me, burnout looks like, or feels like being on a hamster wheel, running around in circles all day. And at the end of the day, it looks like I haven't gotten anything accomplished. Um, you know, it feels like I'm working really hard and I'm not seeing the business grow. Or it looks like I'm working really hard and, um, you know, my children, I feel like are not getting my attention. My husband's not getting my attention. Um, maybe my house isn't getting my attention. I'm just tired right? It feels like it's working. Like, you know, those people, we all know them. They always are doing something, but they never get anything done. They're just running around in circles and like they have no direction, right? That's what burnout is. And I think that sometimes we get so overwhelmed by stuff, we allow ourselves to go in a whole bunch of different directions and never quite accomplish anything. I don't know if any of you guys can relate to that. If you can't, that's awesome. But sometimes because we have so much coming at us with network marketing that we can easily get distracted. One thing, I mean, like we got these little boxes in our hands, right? These little boxes that are constantly throwing information at us. And, you know, there's just so much that's coming our way. So it's so easily to get distracted, right? Especially for someone like me, you know, I've told you guys this before. I am a free spirit. I have trouble with focus. Okay. Um, I am, I, I love how I'm made. I am a definitely a passionate person. I'm led by heart, which is really cool, but it's also my downside. It's like my blessing and also like my downside, because at the same time I can walk into my, you know, my, my den, go in there with the purpose of growing, you know, grabbing a notepad and a pen to, you know, take some notes or do something. 45 minutes later, you guys, I'm playing my guitar and I don't even know what happened. <laughs> like, how did, how did I get this in my hand? What am I doing? Right. Can anybody relate to like the total like squirrel syndrome? Like, you know, you just lose focus like that. Um, same thing, social media. Oh my goodness. I cannot tell you how many times I got on social media with the intent to reach out to someone specifically. And the next thing you know is I'm talking to somebody about their cat, like in this like heated message. I mean, like, you know, or post, it's like, okay, I got to stop, right? I need to be able to hone in. So I think I've seen lots of people saying, yes, that's me. You know, it's just, it's hard. It's hard on us when we're easily distracted by things, right? So um, 
So there's ways that we can combat that, right? There's ways that we can actually keep focus. So at the beginning of this year, right? You know how like everybody says, I have a word for the year. How many of you are feeling like your word is like, you know, whatever, because 2020 was, yeah, so far. But you guys, 2020 isn't over yet. This can still be an amazing, an amazing year. Okay. So I just want to throw that out there because, you know, hold on tight to those words. I believe that we are given those for a reason. Guess what mine is? Intentional. I always hope that God's going to give me like abundance or I'm going to get one of those like really cool words. And it seems like I always get those ones that have those lessons attached to them. And of course, you know, intentional, that's, that's my word, but you know, it's been a good one because this has been a year that I need to learn how to be intentional. You know, I just can't go with, you know, whatever whim I feel like I have to put laser focus on things because I've got a growing family, right? My, um, you know, we're I, busy. Work is busy. There's so many different things that can distract me. And you know what? I will literally be the person running around like a hamster on a hamster wheel if I don't have intention. So that is how you're going to avoid burnout. Okay, you guys. So I'm going to have some tips for you. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to put out there that is really helpful is that, you know, putting your focus on your business first, your business before and your daily activity before you do it on your team. So some of you don't have a team yet. That's okay. But you know what, if you even have one person that you're working with one person, you've got a team. So this is going to apply. But when you wake up, the first thing that like I lean to do is like, you know, I'm on the West coast. A lot of my people are on the East coast or central time zone. I wake up to a phone full of messages every single morning. And you want to know something? My, it's tempting to first thing in the morning to just dive into the team, dive into those needs, right? But that's a reactionary response. I want to dictate my day. I don't want my day to dictate me. So if the first thing I do is grab my phone and, you know, start dealing with the team, like that's not necessarily going to put my day on the best trajectory, right? I need to make sure that I take care of my my business before I pour into the team business. Now, yes, they are the same, but there's a few reasons you want to focus on your business first, right? Um, so the first thing you want to do is pour into your frontline activity, right? I'm going to tell you some ideas of what, what that looks like. But um, for a lot of people, they have a power 30. Um, I'm going to talk to you about a power hour. A lot of teams have different things that they're doing that you can plug into that are just like these daily method of operations that you're going to go through, okay? If you have one and it's working for you, like don't fix what's not broken, right? Just use it. And honestly, like I use different ones. This is not my tried and true, but I'm just gonna give you an example of what it can look like to do your stuff first. And you know what? This stuff needs to be done before I dig into the team. Now, obviously if there's emergency, right? Like that, that's different. But the truth is, is that this stuff needs to come first. So what you wanna do, you guys, is you wanna set a timer, okay? And the reason you're going to want to set a timer to do this stuff is because one, like you want to be laser focused, right? You're not going to let the distractions come in. And you know, if you only have a set time, it's like, you can do that. You can focus on that set time, but two, like you want to create a sense of urgency. So if you know, like you've only got 10 minutes before someone's coming to your house and like your kids have messed up the entire living room, you're going to be hustling. Like you're going to be like working hard to get it done. Same thing with our business. You're giving yourself a time to get it done. And you need to, you know, you want to make sure that it's laser focused and you're going to find that you're going to get way more done in a little time block than you would if you were just spending hours just kind of scrolling around working here and there. Like it doesn't work that way. You will spend your entire day scrolling through your phone, getting nothing accomplished. So this is a way to keep laser focused and to spend you're, you're wanting to work smarter, not harder. You don't want to spend 17 hours a day working your business. Okay. Like honestly, when you're brand new, you can work this business an hour a day. As your team grows, as it gets bigger, you're going to work more hours, but you're making more of an income. So it's worth it. Right. Okay. So we're going to talk power hour. Okay. Again, you might have a power 30, do whatever works for you. So one thing that I like to do is break a power hour into four 15 minute slots. Okay. Um, 15 minutes for each one. First slot. Okay. What you're doing for 15 minutes solid without losing focus. You know what? If your message goes off, you're not going to respond. You're not going to, if you, even if you're messaging somebody about this during that power hour, if they respond to you, you're not going to message them back. Like your focus is just on this activity. Um, you know, if your house is on fire, you can leave it. Otherwise you're, you're stuck. You're doing this thing for the full time. Right? So the first one is you're going to be starting conversations and adding to your network. Okay, that can look like a lot of different things. Starting conversations can look like sending birthday messages, right? Happy birthday. It can look like, um, 
like new friends. When you guys get new friends on Facebook, like don't just leave them out there in no man's land because they'll get sucked into the algorithm, you know, wasteland where you're never, you'll never even see them again. You want to connect with those new friends as you get them, send them a message. Um, you know, for me, another thing we're doing is we're adding to our network. So I will scroll through, like scroll with the intent of finding my people, right? Um, you know, through like, you know, there's different ways to find different friends, but um, you find people that stand out to you as someone that you want to hang out with, somebody that you want to be friends with. If you go to their Facebook and or their Instagram and all you see is negativity, if they're, you know, they don't seem like they would connect with you in real life, you wouldn't want to go take them to coffee. Like, that's not who you're going to add. These are going to be people that you actually like, that there's something about them that draws you to them. So you're adding these people, right? And say they accept your friend request. Well, during this time, you're going to be like messaging them, um, you know, and saying, hey, to starting this conversation, hey, you know what? I was so attracted to your Facebook because wow, we have kids the same age. You've got this great positivity. I mean, just whatever it is, we both like dogs. I don't know, you know, whatever it is, that's how you're going to build that connectivity, right? Got to get that conversation going. You guys, we're network marketers. We don't just get to sit here and like put out cute posts and expect the world to come to us, right? Or we have to actually like engage in conversation and build relationship and that's how you're going to do it, okay? So the second thing is prospecting, okay? So then you're going to take another 15 minute block and you're going to prospect people. Okay. There's two ways that I see a lot of us talking about building our business. One is that we are, um, you know, we're attraction marketers. So we just put the stuff out, wait for people to come to us. We don't want to be spammy. And then there's the other side that's the cold messaging. We're like, you know what? It's a numbers game. Let's get as many people, you know, let's get this in front of as many people's face as possible. Now, both of them will work. You can grow a business with both. But what if you like marry the two and find this beautiful place in the center? when you're prospecting. Um, and what that looks like is that you're going to build the relationship fast. You're gonna find people, you're gonna connect with them. You're gonna you know, engage with them and make them realize you're not, you're not a creep, right? You're like a real person. And then you're not gonna also like, so sometimes like guys, like I fall more into the attraction marketing plan, but you know what, we can, we can easily get into that relationship mode and we are friend zoned for life. <laughs> we don't actually get business out of it. That's, you know, that's not the point. Now, don't get me wrong. Our number one goal is always relationship. It's really important. We don't want to be the people who are only in this for business, right? But we need to also reach out to people and there are tactful ways to do that. So I'm not talking like, let's wait a few months, you know, you know all the names of everybody's pets before you actually like prospect the business, okay? It needs to be fast moving. So I'm going to show you what this looks like, you guys. So in this 15 minute block, you're doing this stuff, right? But you're doing this daily. So, you know, so I'm just, I'm kind of letting you know, this is a, this is a process, but you're going to want to reach out to people. You're going to want to make that first connection like we did right earlier, you know, Hey, I love your Facebook. I'm really excited to get to know you. You know, this is why I added you. Right. And then when you're in your prospecting, your, your second little block of time, you're going to actually say to these people, like, you're going to talk to them a little bit more. You're going to engage in conversation. You're going to make sure that you are commenting on their stuff. Right. You're gonna do that over the course of a few days. You're gonna ask them questions. First time you message them, you guys, we're not prospecting, okay? But after you've talked to them a few times and they know that you're like a legit human and you obviously like have this energy together, you know, maybe time three, you're gonna message them and you're gonna be like, hey, you know what? Like, I, I just would kick myself if I didn't say something to you, but I just feel like we've got this connection. I really love the energy that you have. Um, you know, and I just would be so honored to have the opportunity to work with you. Would you be open to looking at a business, you know, at, at our business, what we've got going on over here? Word it however you want, you guys. Like, and I like voice message. I always do voice message. Um, but I just like, it is really powerful to do that. And you know what? If you've already had some connection with them, even if it's just a little bit, people are going to be flattered that you reached out to them. Okay. Um, especially if you're pointing out their, their good points. If you're pointing out their qualities, the things that you like about them. I've never had somebody that got irritated with me and blocked me and was just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you, you saw, you know, I can't believe you want to work with me and you think I'm amazing. How dare you? Like that doesn't happen. You guys if you do it right. You can definitely build those connections. Um, so that's just a way that you're going to be able to prospect with people and you do it again and again. Okay. Guess what? You can't have expectations of what's going to happen because there's a good chance that you're going to go in there. They're going to say, no, now don't, speak that over yourself. Okay. Don't speak that you're going to, you're going to believe in the best, but what if it happens? Like, guess what? So what you planted a seed, you planted a seed and the chances are like, so you're not going to be creepy. If they say no, you're not going to unfriend them. Like, don't do that guys. <laughs> You've given us all a bad name. 
because you're there for relationship. You're going to love them regardless. You're still going to like pictures of their, their kid. Okay. But guess what they're really doing now? They're watching you. They're watching your business. They're like, their eyes are on you. And all of a sudden, maybe they said no, but they're starting to think, well, maybe I could do this. You know, and she didn't just like ditch me like all the other network marketers. She still likes me. She still wants to be my friend. Like maybe, maybe this is something that I could do. Like there it's going to grow. I can tell you that the majority of the people that I've reached out to about this business told me no the first time, probably the second, maybe the third, but you know what, here they are working alongside me, but I never did it in a way that was actually going to break the relationship. Okay. But then you also don't want to wait. Like we get in this analysis paralysis where we think we can't reach out to this person, you know, um, and it will just let it stretch on for months and years. You guys, I had a girl, I love her to death. She's amazing. Um, I never reached out to her about the business ever. And I, we just got really, I, we friend zoned, you know, we just chatted. It was great. She's an amazing entrepreneur. Um, a couple months ago, I saw she joined another health and wellness company. She went from makeup to health and wellness. I'm like, dang. I should have said something. And then I messaged her. I'm like, what did you do? I go, well, why didn't you talk to me? But the truth is, it's like, you know, I should have messaged her because you know what? She'd probably be here right now. She might be doing the training instead of me because she was amazing. But you know, lesson learned, lesson learned. Okay. So the first one we have, we're spending time, you know, starting conversations and networking. Second is prospecting. Third, follow up. Fortunes in the follow up, you guys, you have to follow up with people. Um, this is my hardest thing. And it's, it's like, I don't know why I struggle with it, but the truth is, is so many times when I take the time to follow up, I will have people that's like, oh yeah, I was thinking about ordering that. Oh, what's your link again? I mean, you got to do it. People forget. I forget. I need people to follow up with me because like I said, I'm a distracted hot mess. You know, there's things that I want to order. There's things I want to do. And if people don't actually say, hey, Carly, <laughs> didn't you say you wanted something? Like, oh yeah, I did. You have to follow up with people, whether it's about, you know, a customer, the business, follow up could be checking up on a customer and seeing how they're doing. Um, you know, a really powerful thing is to say, hey, you know, it looks like it's been a while since you've, you know, ordered dose. Are you loving it? Are you ready for your, you know, you ready to try some more? They might have a conversation with you like, yeah, you know, I don't really like it. Or, you know, there's this, oh, well, you know what, let's go ahead and get you started on um, our chai. I think you're going to love it. You know, there's always opportunity to share something different. Um, so it's really important that we do follow up with our existing customers, the ones that are on the fence, the people that are interested in, you know, in the prospect follow up, you guys, there truly is, it's a powerful thing. Okay. Fourth, we, I don't talk about this very much. Um, but referrals, if you spend 15 minutes working on referrals, like that's another powerful way that you can grow your business. Okay. There's a few ways to do this. First off, you can talk to people who are customers who have a great story and you can say would you be willing to share your story on your facebook or on your instagram and take me in it what you know a lot of people are just willing to do that like this is so incredible i think it could impact so many lives would you be willing to share this and then um if like if you want to and you know what i think this is a really cool thing that we can do individually is we can say hey if you're doing you know willing to do this i'm willing to you know pay your shipping on your next dose or, you know, for every customer that decides to buy, I'm going to give you, you know, a rebate towards, you know, towards your next purchase. Those are things that we can do and they're really powerful. I have a girl on my team who literally does that. She gets her customers to post on their wall and she gives them a kickback towards product. And it's amazing how many will do it. And it's amazing how much business she drums up from it. So it's a really powerful thing that we can do. But guess what? That person who posted, what if they have 17 people that are like, oh, what is this? I want to try. What do you think's going through her head or his head? Like, maybe I should grow this business. Maybe I could do this because all I did was put this post up there and all of a sudden I have all this interest. So it's another powerful way to do recruits. Um, so referrals are really important. You can also do it from the perspective of like reaching out to your customer base. Hey, you know what? Do you know somebody that this is going to have an impact on? I know that you're loving that. You know, who else do you know? If you send somebody my direction, I'm going to give you $10 rebate. Now, obviously that comes from our own pocket, but you guys, like it's a way to grow our business and it's really powerful and, you know, and it's going to get you out there further outside of your network. So all of these things, I mean, these are 15 minute blocks. Again, this is just a sample. There's lots of different power thirties, power hours that you can do, but the key is consistency. So if you are literally spending an hour a day working your business in 
laser focused, right? And doing these things very simply. You're not going to get a whole lot like prospecting. You got 15 minutes. You think you're going to talk to a ton of people. You really won't. But if you're doing it every single day, consistently, like I mean it guys consistently, not like I did it one time, like, you know, three weeks ago and it's not working for me, but daily five days a week, I promise you, you're going to see your business grow in a huge way. I've recommended this book before. I'm going to do it again. It's called the compound effect. It talks about the power of small things done consistently and how much impact that's going to have in your business. That's what this is all about. It's about doing a little bit every day and you're going to see a huge boom from it. Okay. So there's just a few more things I want to touch bases on as far as not burn out. Cause I feel like I just, I could have called this a power hour thing. Right. But that's not, that's not what this is about. You're doing this power hour so that you're avoiding burnout. So you're not spending hours and hours working your business and with no direction. This is focused energy in one spot. Okay. So, um, let me look at my notes so I can figure out where I'm at now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. I'm going to continue down that path of, you know, making sure you don't burn out. You guys, you did your power hour. You're doing, you're doing amazing things on, you know, you, you got it done and you can feel real good. You have like, check out that box, huge sense of accomplishment. Okay. But don't get strapped and trapped in the scroll after that. Right? Like you need to learn how to put, I'm speaking to myself, guys, speaking to myself, put your phone down, put your phone down and give your kids 100% attention. Give your husband 100% attention, your friend. Who comes for coffee you know how annoying it is when you're like sitting there hanging out with something you know and they're just like in their phone the whole time like don't do that yeah melissa i need this too i'm speaking to myself okay because i can get so sucked into my phone in this business we get sirens we live in a little old town so anytime there's sirens it's like you know it's a big deal you know okay so um you know sitting at the dinner table with with your family like you want to be present because guess what happens if you're not okay guilt guilt kicks in and you're going to feel bad and guilt is going to cause burnout. You don't want that. You want to feel good at the end of the day. It's okay to put your phone down. And you know, if you've got wait, go back to it and there's 30,000 messages, that's fine. People can wait. In fact, it looks good if we don't answer prospects right away because they know we're busy. Right? So it's totally fine to not just jump to our phone. Um, again, we're being intentional. We need to be duplicatable. You guys, so as leaders, if all you're doing is spending your entire day on your phone, you're not paying attention to your family, you're, you know, you're, you're constantly like on it, you're not taking breaks. That's not modeling what you want your team to do, because guess what you're going to do? You're going to burn your team out. <laughs> your whole team's going to quit because they're tired. Like you, you have to model that and that's hard, but guess what? You know what? When I see Melissa turn off her phone, go spend time with her family. I can't get a hold of her no matter what, because guess what? She's having family time. I respect that. And that's the type of leadership that I need because guess what? There are times I need to unplug and just be with my family. It's so important and it's good leadership to do that. Um, okay. Another thing is, and I'm almost done here guys, but another thing is that when we have these teams, we need to realize that we need to not have expectations of them. We cannot have expectations. You guys, we are running a volunteer army. They're volunteer army, okay? And everyone is going to have a different desire. And we need to be fine with that. One of the hardest things, you know, I know is that we'll look at it. Like for me, like I realize what the potential is here. And I want to run for the biggest thing possible. You know, <laughs> like whatever the, the limit is, you guys, that's where I'm headed. But not everybody is wired that way. And I've had to take a step back. And just realize, you know what, not everybody's quite as crazy as you, Carly. Like, not everybody wants to do that. In fact, the vast majority of people that are going to join you are literally just going to want a little extra money. They're going to want that 500 bucks, that thousand bucks to help contribute to their family. They don't have these grand intentions of building an empire. Okay. And we need to be not just okay with that. We need to embrace that for them. We need to come alongside them. Yeah, it's hard to understand when you're wired like us, right, Lauren? Like, it's hard. But the thing is, it's totally okay. And if I think back to when I started in network marketing, I have to say I was one of those too. Because, yeah, I'm listening. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, empire. Okay, I got to stop reading the comments because you guys are derailing me. Because <laughs> I'm like, yes, I agree with you. But when I started, you guys, I didn't even know to think that big, okay? I didn't know to think that big. I wanted enough money so that I could literally buy diapers. That's where my mind was at. If you would have said, hey, Carly, you can come in and you can make, you know, 
six figures here, or you can make 20,000 a month, or you can make that. I would have been like, you guys are feeding me a line of garbage. This is clearly a scam. Go away. Like that literally would have been my response. What's what? That, I can hear something. Oh, it was, my it was just the, uh... <laughs> Okay, they got muted. That's my greatest fear too, is that one of these days <laughs> I'm going to mute at the wrong time. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so guess what? People need us to be not just okay, but to celebrate and embrace them for where they're at. And if all they ever want is $500 a month, no matter what potential you see in them, okay? They might have, you might look at them and be like, they could do all the things, but if they don't want it, you can't force that on them. That's going to actually push, you know, they're going to, they're going to go away. They're not going to want to deal with it. And so you just have to be okay and not have expectations. Um, I know for me, it changed. I was one of those people that caught vision and I decided that I wanted all the things, right? But you're going to find people that never will. And again, that's okay. Because guess what? Our businesses are mostly made up of those people and those people who feel loved and embraced and supported and celebrated with those small goals that they're totally content with. Guess what you have in those? You have lifers. You have people that are going to stick with you and they're going to be a solid base in your, in your empire, in your company forever because they're so content and so happy and so loved. They're not chasing shiny things, right? They're not going out looking for other opportunities. They're not doing any of that. They are your loyal, true people that build the base of your entire organization. So it's really important that we love those people, love them hard right where they're at, okay? Now you're gonna have those people that are gonna shift like I did and they're gonna be like, now I want all the things, but you wanna know something? Nobody, nobody turned me into a leader. Nobody did. We can't, then, like, we need to take that burden off of us. Because I know for me, I'm like, I got to help them do all the things. I have to, you know what I'm just like, I want to help them win. I want to help them, you know, be able to accomplish all these things. But you know what? Like, that's not mine to do. It's my job to support them, to point them to tools, to help to motivate them, to do what I can and come along beside them. But I don't get to shift their heart and make them decide to be, you know, to grow into this thing, to become this leader. And as soon as I took that burden off of me and realized it was, it was in their core, they made that decision. <sighs> Boy, that took a lot off of me. And that is another way that we burn out is we have these expectations. We think that we're failing because our team isn't doing what we think they should. They shouldn't do what we think they should. They should do what they think they should. And I know that when I made that shift to decide that I wanted to be a leader and I became one, I did it. I did it. It wasn't somebody else that made me into this or molded me. I did it myself. And I used the people who loved me and poured into me as an incredible tool. And I owe them so much. But there again, we have to remember when we have people who are growing into that, they do it. And we just need to love them as they grow and be that support and go at their pace, not our own. All right. I think that that's, let's see. I know I've got one more thing. Yeah. Okay. So most leaders, like I said, they're created, they're not found, but there again, it's not our job to, you know, there's not the burden of going to find them. Okay. There's not the burden of creating them. It's a burden of being the best leader and loving people where they're at, giving them the tools and the motivation to grow as much as they can. Okay. So finally, I got one last point here, guys. Um, yes, we attract them. We attract them. Um, this is my last point. So when dealing with burnout, <laughs> okay, and I've had it before, it's because I am putting all of the burden on myself. And what I really need to do is I need to release it now. Okay. We can, I'm going to talk to you guys about my faith. And my faith is that I truly believe that I can, you know, I give things to God, right? And he's the one that does the building. Now, if you don't come along beside me and my beliefs, that's totally fine right here. I know you got some great tools before, but for me, the end all is that I need to give my business to God again and again, and I need to let him dictate it, right? I need to let him run it and do things on his time. Now, that does not mean, that doesn't mean that I don't work my business and God's just going to plop, here's somebody on your lap that's going to, you know, it, that doesn't work like that. Like, we have to do the things. Like, I... I mean, I can't lay on my couch and pray, oh, Lord, please give me a nice set of abs. Like, it just doesn't work that way. I'm going to have to get off my couch. I'm going to have to go to work. I'm going to have to make it happen, right? But 
the thing is, is that he comes along beside us and he helps us if we're doing the thing. So you guys, if you're doing your power hour or power 30 minutes or whatever, right? If you're doing that, if you are spending time, um, you know, being diligent with your business, but you're, and it's okay to pull away, to take a breath, to spend time engaged with your family, then plug back in. Because guess what? Ultimately, what happens is that if we give it to God, he will grow it in his time. He will bring the people that are supposed to come along beside us. He's going to bring the customers who need this product. We are going to touch the life that we are meant and destined to touch, right? So we have to make sure that we are allowing those things to happen and not continuously stressing out about all the things, right? We can't sit there. If things don't happen, like, you know, oh man, I've been working real hard for a solid two weeks and it hasn't happened like you guys, we have to just release it and know that it's coming and just have peace, okay? So anyway, I hope that this was helpful. I, I hope this is what Judy wanted. <laughs> I'm like, I just went off on a tangent, so I hope this wasn't even what I was supposed to talk about. But anyway, I hope you guys did get um, some value from this. And thank you. Thank you so much for like allowing me to talk into your lives tonight. And that's all I got. So Melissa, I don't know if you're still around, but if so, I'll just give it back to you. Oh my goodness, Carly. I knew it was going to be fire, but that was absolutely amazing. I related to every single piece of what you shared. Thank you so much. You shared like so transparently from complete truth and your honesty is going to help a lot of people. I know that I took a lot of gold away from that. Um, thank you, Carly, so much. You guys, what a perfect take action Thursday. She gave you all of the tools that we need to just get this thing moving, you know, start tomorrow. I think one of, one of the most powerful lessons I've learned in this industry is that don't walk away from this call excited and full of all this value and have all these notes in on your notepad and have a plan to do something and then fail to take the action. So the only thing I'd like to say is take action on all the stuff that she gave to us today. What an incredible, incredible call. So you guys, with that said, have a wonderful evening. Again, thank you so much, Carly. That was phenomenal. We love you guys and have a very safe and happy 4th of July weekend. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Very good. Thank you. Thank you.